Estonia is probably one of the most digitally dependent nation uh, in the world. Uh, we really depend on the digital infrastructure, on e-governance services in our daily lives. I think this is also the reason why Estonia and Estonians take cybersecurity and cyber defense more seriously maybe than some other uh, nations, because our livelihood depends on that, our economic well-being uh, depends on that. The Estonian digital ecosystem has been developed for more than 20 years now, and it provides a method of transparent governance of the state, which helps to build a foundation of trust between the state and its citizens. In spring 2007, following the disputed relocation of the Soviet-era bronze soldier monument, the streets of Tallinn were under siege from organized rioters and looters. But besides the burning city center, Estonia faced cyber attacks that have been widely referred to as the world's first cyber war. It was the first attack against an entire nation state. At the peak of these cyber attacks, 58 Estonian websites were offline at once, including those of the government, most newspapers and banks. At first we thought it's a technical problem, but when the public reactions uh, reached the government, then we understood that it destabilizes the society and poses a major threat at least on a psychological level, although no material damage took place. So I think it was very, very important that the impact an attack has on society at large is taken into account, and this posed a security threat for a country as a whole. Then it became clear that it was not, the source was not within the society, it was not a public uh, reaction or discontent, but this was an orchestrated effort whose roots were outside the borders of Estonia. And I think when this was understood, it became clear that the global community has got a message that cyber attacks and cyber conflicts are there to stay. Before the events of spring 2007, cyber attacks had not been considered a serious threat to the state and citizens. This experience served as a reminder that events in cyberspace directly influence security and led to the adoption of Estonia's first cybersecurity strategy a year later. The framework document organized the relevant policy areas and thereby laid a basis for a comprehensive approach across the government and society. The main challenge was um, to uh, bring all the different stakeholders together for a same vision. We were quite lucky to have very good technical experts, but uh, as uh, in many other countries, cyber is not a technical issue. Cyber has to be elevated to the political level and someone has to be able to explain to the political leaders what shall we do and what actually would help us to become more secure. The biggest significance of the cyber attacks uh, in 2007 was opening the international discussion. It proved to the to politicians and managers that uh, cyber attacks can be uh, dangerous to, to national security. And after that, uh, uh, everybody could refer to, to a student experience and start to talk what it means for them. It's very important to have more international cooperation. Cyber does not have borders. So does international cooperation. International cooperation is borderless to be effective in tackling the challenges of cyberspace and cyber attacks, we have to cooperate on all different levels, starting with political cooperation and concluding with capacity building to those states who need our advice, our help and our financial resources, as well as technical assistance. The threats are evolving quite rapidly right now because the technology is becoming more and more ubiquitous. Uh, we see our homes becoming smarter, our cars becoming smarter. So theoretically, the state can put a lot more emphasis on even single individuals. The general pattern that is emerging today is that cyber is becoming part of the natural tool set for the state. Among its other pillars of power, such as military, diplomacy, economics, and so forth. Uh, while it is not universally used on the offensive side, many countries uh, have publicly declared that uh, offensive cyber is something in their arsenal and uh, if needed, they will use it. 
International law provides a number of options for states to respond to cyber operations. Today, many states are struggling to identify their position on international law because legal standards are always a double-edged sword. They limit hostile cyber operations directed against the state, but at the same time limit the state's freedom of action in cyberspace. The number one way we can enhance cyber deterrence is to clarify international law so that those who would conduct cyber operations know there will be a cost imposed when they violate international law. Uh, there were many people that said that cyberspace was a wild west. It was a new domain that was not governed by international law. Those people were not international lawyers. The international law community understood very quickly that the current norms that exist in international law, norms like sovereignty, uh, norms governing warfare, such as you may not direct your attacks against the civilian population, that those norms applied fully, entirely in cyberspace. And we quickly understood that the question was not whether international law norms applied, but instead how they applied. And that's why a major project known as the Tall Emanuel Project, run here in Estonia, was launched to identify precisely how the norms of international law do apply. Now that project, the Tall Emanuel Project, over seven years led to identification of 154 different international law rules that applied to cyber operations conducted by states and by non-state actors. And that uh, project also identified those areas where greater clarity was needed in the application of those norms because of the unique characteristics of cyberspace. In the United Nations, we participate in the group of the governmental experts on cybersecurity. And in that group, we talk about international law, but also talk about political norms. Political norms that are not binding, but which dictate and which predict the uh, behavior of different states. So, for example, Estonia has been very vocal on protection of critical infra. So, for Estonia, a small country, a country that believes, trusts and supports international law, norms, rules are extremely important. We try to build our systems in accordance with the core principles of democracy, which means fundamentally distribution of power, and that means distribution of systems. This way, our uh, very distributed system is not susceptible to one particular weak link being broken, but rather the entire net is resilient, the entire network, the entire system is resilient and is therefore stronger against attack. Estonian digital ecosystem consists of four separate individual ecosystems. First is digital identity, second is the channels or the interaction between the citizen and the government information systems, thirdly is X-Road and finally there's the government cloud. X-Road is probably the most significant of these four. The key lesson we have learned there is the lesson of ecosystems. It turns out that it is not enough to assemble the ingredients of a system. There must be a spark that ignites them, that provides the service providers and the service consumers with key incentive that kicks off this positive feedback loop of the more services they are, the more often they are consumed, there are consumers, the more there are service providers. The main thing to understand in terms of cybersecurity is that uh, it takes constant effort and constant commitment. And in Estonia, for the past 25 years or so, uh, there has been a steady progression towards a more digitized and secure uh, e-state. I think the main thing to learn from the Estonian experience is that uh, information technology can serve a very useful role in conserving resources and doing things more effectively and efficiently. However, the corollary to that uh, is that you also have to worry about security uh, in the IT space. So cybersecurity becomes a must. It is not an elective for Estonia. It is a mandatory thing that we have to do. Cyber society is a societal phenomenon and I think the level of its development uh, both on functional level as well as security-wise depends on participation of different parts of the society and academia as well as private enterprises contribute to the overall level of development. And I think uh, from the security point of view, two very important aspects should be mentioned. First, that people trust the technology. 
that this is developed from the early days in a way that it poses no harm to its users. No backdoors, uh, transparent policies, transparent development. So this is extremely important and universities uh, and research organizations together with industry partners can contribute essentially to that. And then secondly, public awareness of the possibilities of the threats but also the benefits of the cyber society based services is important and again it's partly an educational issue but in a broader sense it's a societal problem where different partners must contribute first and foremost the businesses and academia in addition to public services. One of the great challenges in cybersecurity is to identify, hire, train and retain a capable cyber workforce. In Estonia, we have two quite interesting solutions uh, to help provide the national security aspect uh, of this workforce. Specifically, we have the National Defense League, which is a voluntary defense organization under the military chain of command. Uh, this allows people to volunteer their time and effort and resources uh, in order to protect the national security interests of Estonia. Since 2011, this organization has had a cyber defense unit that collects cybersecurity experts in Estonia who are willing to contribute their time uh, for the cause of national defense. You have um, many actors out there who are able to use technology against us, our political and economic interests. And, and we, the European Union, have to be able to protect ourselves. So this is the major uh, goal uh, for ourselves. So there have been many other um, political um, initiatives to pay more attention to the European Union resilience. And the new cyber strategy will be falling into the same mold in a way that it will um, serve a goal of um, making member states more resilient in cyber and we have to make sure that there is cooperation between member states. We have to also help member states, especially those ones who have less expertise than, than some, some others, we have to help them um, to catch up and we have to concentrate on, on prevention, on cooperation, on capabilities and also to, on response. Estonia's approach to cybersecurity has always been based on the principle that security must be part of the design process. The digital ecosystem needs security, cooperation and compliance with international law in order to continue being a catalyst in our society.